So one of the most commonly asked questions I see all of the time when it comes to riding horses is how do I get a dull horse to lighten up? Um, I had a question, somebody asked me just the other day on a TikTok video, I was talking about a horse that responds to a feel. And for those of you who don't know what a horse responding to a feel is, that's not just a light horse. That is a horse that when the balance shifts, that horse responds to that shift of balance in the reins and in the hackmore and the bit, that signal. And that's what you get a horse that responds to a feel. You can see that she's responding before those reins ever put any pressure, before pressure ever even comes into play. And that's what a feel is. And a lot of people will ask, how do I start getting my horse to lighten up and respond off of that feel? And when you see that question asked on Facebook or whatever in a group on social media, I, you're going to get hundreds of comments of the light hands make a light horse. And I hate, I hate that answer, honestly, because those, the people who are asking, obviously, they don't know what you mean when you're saying light hands make a light horse. And a lot of professionals, a lot of clinicians, people who educate, they refrain from saying light hands make a light horse because that statement alone is extremely vague. Light hands, 100% of the time, without correct timing and without meaning, mean nothing, and you're never going to get a light horse. So say that I want my horses to start backing and be light and responsive. If I'm doing this and I don't get a response out of my horse and I'm just sitting here waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and, waiting, and then that horse responds and I release, what am I doing? I could be sitting here for 10 minutes. I could be sitting here for 20 minutes waiting for a response for that horse. What if that horse entirely decides to just sit here and ignore this till the end of time? What am I doing right now with this horse? I am teaching that horse to ignore my cue, to become dull to that. And so you need to ask yourself, when you want a light horse, first ask yourself this. Define light. Is light to you meaning that when your hand just comes into contact with that horse, that horse responds. As soon as contact comes into play, that horse is responding to you, whatever you're asking them to do. Is light you're not pulling 20 pounds, getting that horse to stop? Is that light to you? Light to me is a horse responding to feel. That right there. That's light. That's responsive. That is light, when a horse responds to a feel. Before pressure, before contact ever come into play, that horse is responding. So ask yourself this too. And a lot of people are sitting there saying, you know, I've had a lot of people tell me my horse isn't capable of that. They have never been capable of that. When I got this mare back, when I bought her back, she was like steering a freight train. She had lost all lightness and responsiveness that I had originally trained into her because she'd been ridden by little kids. And little kids, you know, they don't know how to ride a horse that has lightness and responsiveness. And getting her back to understanding that feel was a chore. You know, I had to be pretty strict with her. But your horse is capable, and this is something that Carson James says a lot, and I wholeheartedly agree with him. Your horse is fully capable of feeling a flame to lie anywhere on its body, Ride your horse like you freaking believe it. If a horse can feel a fly ran, land right here and twitch and get that fly off, why can't your horse feel that? Why can't your horse respond to that? If they can feel a fly land right there on their neck, how come your horse can't respond to that? There is no reason at all. If your horse, when a fly lands on their neck, on their side, on their butt, on their belly, and that horse is twitching, when that fly lands on there, your horse sure as hell can respond to this. Look at that. Your horse can respond to a feel because every horse comes with that natural instinct. Some are a little more sensitive than others. Some are going to let the fly bite them first before they twitch their skin. But you know what? A horse is still going to feel that fly land on their body. Why does that horse twitch when they feel that fly land on their body? Because they twitch before that horse that fly bites 
99% of the time, the reason why a horse waits that fly lands on their body and they twitch or they switch their tail at it before it bites because they don't want that bite. Give that horse a reason to respond to that. Give them a reason. Black and white makes a horse light. Don't sit there and believe the light hands make a light horse bull crap because it's not true. When it comes to a horse, see right here, I asked her to move forward with my feel, with my seat, my legs, and she didn't respond, so I got after her. Black and white. I have that feel. When they respond, I pick it up, that shift of balance. All right, you responded. That feel, see that time? She didn't wait for that fly to bite. That fly landed on her and she left. She started walking. Give that horse a reason to be responsive. Give that horse a responsibility of listening to what you're asking them to do. Tell people all the time, right there, she's not listening, got after her. Hey, listen. You know, I tell people all the time. When it comes to horses that aren't green broke, that aren't green horses anymore, they've had a lot of miles under the saddle and you're ready to start getting them finished. Ask and demand. There is no ask, tell, demand. You know, everybody says ask, tell, demand. There's no gray area. There is black, there is white. There is ask, there is demand. So when I want my horse to stop and I give them what I want them to respond to, and they stop, awesome. When I ask them to go, I'm asking to go right now, and she's not responding. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna go a little more pressure, a little more pressure, kick, 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 kick. Okay, now we're walking. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, all right, let's go, no go, get going. Make that horse move. Make that horse, you know, twitch that skin before that fly bites. Understand that. When I ask him to stop, right there. No, I ask you to stop. Get after him. Give him a reason to listen. Let's do this at the trot. Trot around in a couple circles here, and I'll go to the trot and then to the stop. Give you guys an idea. So I'm going to ask her to whoop. Nope. Hey, give her a reason to whoop when I ask her to with my seat and my hands. I gave her a chance there. She blew through it. Get back. Trot. There we go. We're picking up. We're getting kind of lively here. We're going to whoop. Ooh, hoo, hoo. She almost got that bite. She almost got to that, you know, black and white. She was black. Almost went to that white of, hey, let's get after it. But no, we didn't have to get there. Trot. And it's going to be the same thing with my legs when I ask her to go. Everything with my body, if you need your horse to lighten up with your legs, same thing. You need your horse to lighten up with your hands, same thing. We're going to have some whoop. Look at that. Right there, just stop. You didn't have to get into the, hey, get after it. That time I just asked her to walk, she was ready to trot out, trot. That was a little bit sticky, and as she starts to get better with things, I'm going to start getting more demanding with, you know, even though she's responding, she's a little sticky coming out. Get after her. Ooh. Hey, sticky with that stop. Get after her. Just like that. Listen to my whoop. Listen to my seat. And as I stated in pretty, previous videos, it's not my voice that I'm necessarily wanting them to listen to. It's my seat and my legs. I'm saying whoa for you guys to understand what I'm asking because I'm asking so little with my seat in my legs and my hands that it might be hard to see. So when I say, whoa, that is my verbal cue for you guys so you understand when I'm asking her to stop. Because otherwise to you guys, it just looks like I'm going right to crank it on her face, you know, when I ask her to do something. So I'm giving you guys an idea of when I'm asking her to do something and when I'm getting after it for it. So when you're starting out with a horse that's really dull, you're not going to be as abrasive as I am with her. You know, when you go for the whoop, that right there would be fine. But because she knows better, I would usually would get after her. But if you're starting out with a horse that's really abrasive, really bracy and just dull, 
that right there is perfectly fine. That horse responded. She responded to my seat, my legs and my hands taking the shift, you know, the balance shift out of that hack more. She listened to that. Ooh. See, that's a really good, you know. But as, you know, she does this 10 times out of 10, when I ask her, she's really good. But now that she's to the point where she's doing that, you know, the ooh. 10 times out of 10 where I'm not having to crank after her because she didn't stop. She's doing a really nice stop now. She's really light when she stops, but she's kind of blowing through it just a little bit. So now that she's doing... You know, every single time that I go around and go, Whoop. she listens and she stops really nice and, you know, light. I don't ever have to actually get any contact with her. I don't have to get into that white. I don't have to go from black to white with her. Now, because she's does that 10 times out of 10. Now, when I ask her to, Whoop. hey. I want her to really start planting that butt. I don't want her, when I ask her to woo, she's got one step to. So we're getting after her now. And this is how you're going to start getting really light and responsive horses. 100% of the time when you're riding them, no matter what you're doing, you're black and white with your hands, your seat, and your legs. Woo. Hey. There we go. See how I got after her? She was going to blow through that stop. There we go. That's what we're looking for. See how it only took a few times? And you have to do that every single time that you ride when you're starting to form new habits. When it comes to forming new habits with your horses, it could take up to 284 days for a person to form a habit. And that's doing it every day consistently. For a horse, imagine how long it can take up to a horse. And each horse is different. Each horse is going to pick things up quicker. Phil picks these things up a lot quicker because I started her like this. This is the mentality and the mindset she was started with under saddle. Now, if I got somebody else's horse here and I was working on a horse that was dull and this horse had become hard in the face and just completely unresponsive and dangerous, I might be doing this for two hours before I get a two in a row good stops when I ask them to or slow downs. It might take me two hours. With Phil, it took me two tries because she was started with it. She had that foundation laid and set versus a horse that wasn't started with that mentality that has been riding for 12 years with a rider that doesn't treat them like they're, they can feel a fly land anywhere on their body with a rider that's not consistent. That's going to take a lot more time. And so how you get a horse light and responsive is being black and white with them. Being, hey, I'm asking. I told you. No, there's, we got to go back and we got to correct this because I asked and now I'm demanding. You know, there's no, there's no three steps. There's no gray area. There's no ask, tell, demand. It's ask, demand. It's black and white. There's no gray area. There's no tell. It is, hey. Nope, you need to come back and listen to me. I told you, you know, it is. I asked you and now I'm demanding you. There's no second chances when it comes to a more broke horse, a more finished horse, a horse that has been ridden enough now that they can understand that, you know, they've been through the loops. With a green horse, a, you know, a two-year-old that I'm starting under saddle or a horse I'm starting, no matter the age that I'm starting under saddle, I'm going to be a lot more forgiving with them. You know, I want them to want these things and I want them to enjoy their work. And I'm going to be more forgiving. Phil, she's seven years old. She's been started under saddle since she was a two-year-old. She was started with this mentality and this method. She knows. I am, hey, black and white. No, we're being a little more stern with her. We're not very forgiving. When you're seasoned in something, your boss isn't as forgiving. Your leader isn't as forgiving. And it's the same thing when it comes to leg commands, when it comes to neck reining, when it comes to whatever. You know, if I want her to move her shoulders over this way, back up, take a step back and move her shoulders over and use my legs, I'm going to pick up that rein, cue her to be like, hey, we're going to rock back on that hind end. There we go. We're going to cue her with the, there we go. 
that was pretty nice. There was some contact on this outside rain here, which is okay because we're still working on this here. That's much better. That's kind of more what I'm looking for in that lightness. Move those shoulders, not that butt. And so I'm going to show you guys here when it comes to legs as well. You're going to do the same thing when it comes to your legs, everything that you do with your body. So I'm going to go two-handed here. I'm going to ask her to side pass. And all it's going to take for me to ask this horse to side pass is I'm going to drop my hip on whatever side we're moving away from. I want her to go to the left. I'm going to drop my right hip. When I drop that right hip, what's going to happen is my leg is going to touch her. Right now, I am cueing her to side pass. And later on in the future, once I start getting her to kind of move off of that leg really nice, I'm going to open this door up. So right now I'm cueing her to side pass and there's nothing here. With the light hands make a light horse method, we're going to sit here and we're just going to train this horse to ignore this. That is all I'm doing right now. Versus if I were to go, all right, now we're moving. Look at that. Q, Q, Q. There we go. Oh, give her that reason to move away. Give her that accountability to move away. Give her that responsibility to move away. And all it took was two times. Hey, listen, let's try this side. I'm going to give her that. It wasn't quite the step in the right direction. It was just kind of a back step, but she did move away from she leaned a little bit this way. So right now, kind of going into the green horse mentality here, we're going to let that count and we're going to let her sit. All right, we're going to try, we're going to ask again. Move off of that leg. There we go. Q. There we go. Q. There we go. And right now, now that she knows that, hey, this means move off of the leg and she's really like oh i i understand now you gave me the responsibility you you know you really showed me what you meant there um i'm gonna start making sure that we're more you know direct with my cue and that doesn't mean to go back a couple steps and lean like she was trying that means go to the side so we're gonna drop that, there we go, side. That's all it takes. Drop that hip, just barely touch her with that fender. There we go. And like I said, just like I was getting after her with the stop at the trot, when I said, hey, you know, this is the more ask demand phase for her. As she moves on, it'll be more like that when it comes to the side pass as well. It will be more like, all right, I ask, get over. There's no, you know, and if she's sticky through the start, you know, I would have, I would have got after her there versus being more forgiving about it. You know, the ask demand phase when they do this nine times out of 10 or 10 times out of 10 on every single ride when your horse, when you ask them to move over and move out, they are. It's the same thing when it comes to a walk and you ask them to stop. We're going to get after her because she knows better. She knows better when I say, Woo, we need to stop. We need some brakes. You know, we're turning into a Ferrari. We're not a Mack truck anymore, Missy. You know, we're turning into that nice sports car with that nice handle. Woo. When I touch that brake, I expect that sports car to stop. Same thing with her. When I ask her to back, I expect that back. And see here, she knows better. She knows better than that. She's hanging right now. So what I'm going to do is, hey, there. She knows her backs and she can back up in a straight line pretty quick. And so when you first start asking your horses to back with your seat and your legs, shifting the balance of that hack more. Hey. This is hanging for her. 
you know, she's right on the edge of contact with my rein. And so now, and she knows better. Oh. And so now when I ask her to back, we're going to, hey, 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 make sure we're getting that straight line. Get after her. She knows that she needs to back faster than that. Get after, hey, hey. We don't want them hanging on us. Cause all you do when you don't give a horse a reason, much better. When you don't give a horse accountability and you don't give them a reason to be light, they're not gonna be light. All you're doing is teaching them to be dull. So if I were riding her along like this and I were riding her with reins like this, a lot of people, would say that this is a loose rein. Her knowing better, she's pretty confused right now. I'm actually pushing her forward with my legs in my seat because she's like, what are you doing? You are telling me to stop with those reins. This, this is a loose rein. See the difference? A lot of people, I've seen a lot of people when they go to ride their horses and you say they ride on a loose rein, they think a loose rein means this. You know just on the edge of contact and for a horse that's knows the difference knows how to be ridden with a feel and be light and responsive versus a horse that doesn't that right there you could see on her with that she's just on the edge of contact she's i'm not even making contact with her but I'm shifting the balance of that hack more and I'm really happy. I'm squeezing with my legs and I'm riding her forward because if I let go, we'd get a stop and I'm not even making contact with her. She knows too. I've worked with her driving her into a stop. So she knows that when I'm riding her like this, we're going to get driven. You know, she's like, uh, we're going to drive into the stop. You know, so you could see I'm on the edge of contact. There's still slack in these reins, but if I move my hand just a little bit one way or the other, it, ah, uh, get gone. Sorry, girl, I'm confusing you. But riding around, like, even like this, what a lot of people would call a loose rein, is confusing to Phil here, who's been taught that the shift of this balance that flies on her body, she's trying to respond to it, and I'm having to ride her forward through it. All I'm doing right now is teaching her to ignore that balance shift in that hackamore. So as soon as I let those reins loose, we get a more forward walk. Or I tighten these reins back up. As soon as I let my legs off, we get a stop. You know, as she kind of leaked down into a stop there. We're not going to get after her there. But you can see how something like that is teaching a horse to ignore there we go. Ignore that fly. Ignore that ask. So loose rein, when I say loose rein, I mean this. You know, I mean, you know, I want those. So when I pick up that rein, come up close here. That butt over. So when I pick up that rein, you could see that hackamore, the balance of that hackamore, that heel knot kind of bobbing just by picking I'm not even making contact yet and you could see the balance of that hackamore is shifted just by doing that your horse can feel that look at that your horse can feel that you don't even have to you don't even have to get on your horse's face and you know rip on him your horse can feel that and act like it ride him like it ride him like it and give him a reason to respond to something like that so if we go into a trot here we're going to kind of go out and do a faster trot. I'm riding her, and I'm riding her, and I'm going to ask her to stop here. Ooh. Hey, she knows better. We're going to get after her. Give her a reason to listen to my body. Right there, she's thinking, maybe I should have listened to the seat and the legs first. That would have been a lot nicer. That would have been a lot easier on me. If I would have just listened to her seat and legs first, instead of blowing through the stop like that. Let's try that again. 
Oh, that blew through the stop, so we're going to get after her. I want you guys to notice here, too, when I'm getting her to back up, when she's blowing through the stop, I'm not pulling on both reins at once. I'm alternating. No problem has ever been solved on, with a horse by pulling on both reins. All that does is teach them, teach them to brace, alternate back and forth. So we're going to do this again here. Oop. Lucky there. Much better. Much better. We're going to throw a little cherry on top here because I know that we're going to be getting to this point soon. Hey. There. That little back. Much better. That's what we're looking for. See, you're giving her a reason. You're giving her that accountability. There she went, didn't take off at a trot. Poked her. Got her going. Here we go. Give her that accountability. That reason. <laughs> I didn't even fully ask her. And she you could see there, I went to sit down. That was a mixture of mixed communication from me. She was really listening there. That was me. That mixed communication. You see her stop. And I was like, wait a minute. No, we're going to keep going because he anticipated. And I was like, no, you didn't. that was a lot of decisions in my mind. She anticipated. As soon as I went to sit down, I didn't expect her to react so fast. So I sat back up. I was going to keep her going more. But then I was like, no, actually, we're going to stop. And I never even really, I never made contact with the reins or anything. Right there, she was listening to my seat. As soon as I sat up, she started going again. And then I sat back down. Not even a stride later, she stopped. That was my mixed communication, not hers. Try this again. Give them that reason to be light and responsive. Give them responsibility. Oh, ah, we blew through the stop there. See that last time with my mixed communication with her? I messed her up for this time because... What I did there with her last round really just let her leak through the stop, even though she was listening. It wasn't direct and it wasn't clear. So I messed her up for that time. Oh. Back. There we go. That time, borderline, I was ready to get after, but I'll take it. But you could see how just being black and white with a horse and getting after him. And just being, hey, ask, demand, can make a world of difference. Oh, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. And then pretty soon you're going to have that, the walk, the truck, the canter. You're going to be able to run your horse at a dead run and do that. If you hold your horse accountable for their actions and get after them and say, hey, no, actually, you have to be responsible. I asked you and now I'm telling now I'm demanding you. Light hands will never make a light horse. Light hands 100% of the time all the time is only going to make a horse dull. It's only going to teach a horse to ignore light hands. Light hands with proper timing and a reasoning to be light is going to give your horse reason be light. So that's why I started telling people black and white makes a horse light. Because a lot of people don't, you know, the light hands make a light horse. They sit there and think that if I do this and sit here and do this with my horse and ask him to back, eventually they'll back and then I'll let them go. And all that's going to do is teach your horse to be dull to that. Because what if they never back? You know, even and if it takes them five minutes before they take a step backwards, by that time they've already started ignoring what you're doing with your hands and your seat and your legs. And they're just backing up. I mean, they're not listening to you. And all you've done is teach that horse to be dull and unresponsive to this. You know, that shift of that balance. A horse can feel a fly land anywhere on its body. Ride them like it. Ride them like you believe that. You know that. You know a horse, you know, can feel a fly land anywhere on its body. You know that a horse that's going to twitch its skin. And the reason why that horse does it is because that fly bites. That fly gives them a reason to be alert and aware of what is around and on their body. Be that fly on that horse's back. When you say one thing, when you say, okay, 
fly landing, fly landing. You know, now I'm going to ask her to back. Fly landing, fly biting. Fly landing. Give them a reason to be alert and aware that you're on their back. Give them a reason to focus on you and not everything else that's going on around them. Light hands will never make a light horse. Black and white will make a horse light. 